Hello, I'm Ilash Levinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you everything you need to know. So in the latest episode of Who's Going to Invade Us this week, Russian media have spun a new yarn, this time starring Polish fighter jets allegedly rehearsing an attack on the Kaliningrad region. Yes, because what's a weekday without a bit of simulated invasion drama, right? Poland's Ministry of Defense, however, has called this story what it is – fake news. Ministry officials have reaffirmed that no, their fighter jets weren't out on a practice run to rattle Kaliningrad. They've been too busy not doing that, which must be a full-time job given the frequency with which these accusations are hurled by the Kremlin. Now, the source of this tale? The Fighter Bomber Telegram account rumored to be run by a retired Russian Air Force pilot. Because when you want reliable information, you always turn to anonymous, possibly retired pilots on social media. Now, according to Fighter Bomber, Polish jets made six approaches towards the exclave, but turned around 40 kilometers from the border. Nothing like the good old, I almost crushed that guy, but then I decided not to story to stoke the fires of international tension, I guess. Well, perhaps the Russians are still spooked by the memory of their hasty retreat in the 1920 Battle of Warsaw, and anything moving at high speed near their border, be it a Polish jet or a particularly fast-moving cloud, is a cause for alarm. Or maybe, just maybe, they're trying to shift focus from their own not-so-neighborly behavior elsewhere. Whatever the case, the skies over Kaliningrad remain as calm as ever, aside from the storms of misinformation, of course. Now, in the latest bout, ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner we have Russia. His military strategy seems to involve as much denial as actual defense. And in the blue corner, actually blue and yellow corner, Ukraine stepping up its game and apparently dictating the tempo in the region of Kursk. According to expert opinions, Russian losses are stacking up faster than empty vodka bottles at a state shindig. The Kremlin's response? They insist everything is under control, which is Russian for who left the gate open? Reinforcements are trickling in so slowly that they are exhausted by the time they even smell the battlefield. It's like sending in waves of soldiers who have just run a marathon in winter boots uphill. Шок для того, чтобы у тех, кто ну заперся в таком эмоциональном домике, кто не хочет ничего знать, для кого ничего не изменилось и ничего не происходит, где-то идет какая-то война, она и она для них не нужная, не интересная, не важная. Вот что. Какой еще должен быть более сильный шок эмоциональный для того, чтобы эти люди ну, испытали настоящую эмоцию? Невозможно себя отделять от этих 180 тысяч людей. 180 тысяч человек, которые вынуждены были оставить свои дома в Курской области, это вот не кто-то чужие. Это свои. Потому что дальше за Курском, ну вы на карту, кто не очень себе представляет, можете посмотреть, что там дальше за Курском. Я повторяю еще раз о... Это сердце России представить себе вот вот это вот то самое историческое культурное национальное ядро, которое представляет собой вот то, что называется, то, что является Россией местом обитания русского народа, где он родился, сформировался, откуда он начал формировать и расширять свое государство, национальное государство. Вот 180 тысяч русских людей. 
Yeah, I'm quite sure that the kids of Russian oligarchs having fun at, at expensive Moscow nightclubs are going to care a lot about all this. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian side is not just fighting, they are choreographing this dance. They have turned the tables so effectively that they are now the ones calling the shots, quite literally. Thanks to some top-notch reconnaissance, they know where Russian troops are marching, even before the troops do. It's like playing a video game with cheat codes enabled, but the game is real life and the stakes, as you may know, are incredibly high. So meanwhile, help is what the Kremlin jesters seem to be shouting right now. Coming up is a clip of the rarely sober ex-military man Gurulyev, furious that he was not stopped at a police checkpoint all the way to the front line. As a result, he wants to send all Russian traffic cops to the front. By the way, we have one question. Was Gurulev going to the front to watch the proceedings from afar? Or did he just make up this story to show himself on TV as a tough guy? Вот он, линия фронта, я спокойно приехал, прошел по городу, забрал там стариков, посадил машину, уехал обратно. Тут никого нету, до Москвы дошел никого. Вчера еду с Нижнего Новгорода, подъезжаю к дому, палкой машут, как у вас дела? Да. Нормально дела, вот туда бы всех, честно говоря, там. Ну, слава богу, вели режим КТО. Причем по режиму КТО старший начальник, это начальник ФСБ местного. Вспомним нашу практику, наконец-то, блокпостов, как это было в Чечне, проверок, прохода, всего остального. Надо перекрыть, изолировать зону боевых действий. Потому что под видом беженцев, уезжалок, вот сейчас садись любой там, на наши машины с российскими номерами, езжай спокойно до Москвы, захватывай любой торговый центр, театр, что хочешь делай. Свободна дорога, камеры есть. Камеры что вычислят? Ну но, но. Но это ж правда. Я в конце своего выступления, оно может быть эмоциональное, хочу, чтобы у нас на каждом уровне и везде начали наши руководители принимать решения. Уметь отвечать за каждое свое сказанное слово. Не бояться ставить свою подпись под документом и четко формулировать те задачи, не расплывчато, которые подчиненные должны выполнить. Вот когда мы вот этого добьемся, тогда мы победим. So the whole scenario is boosting Ukrainian morale to such heights you'd think they just won the Eurovision all over again. The message is clear, Ukraine isn't just defending itself, they are pressing forward. And as for the locals from the Kursk region, they're probably watching this unfold like it's the season finale of their favorite show, hoping the good guys are actually writing the winning script. Now, in a truly astounding feat of make-believe, North Korea has built a brand new modal city called Samjion. Yes, folks, while the rest of the world is busy with reality, North Korea is taking build it and they'll come to a whole new level. Except the they, in this case, might just be some very, very lost tourists, if there are actually any tourists coming to North Korea, and there can't be that many of them. Here is how it works in the Hermit Kingdom. If you can't have a real bustling city, just build a fake one and call it a symbol of modern civilization. It's like when a kid throws a blanket over a table and calls it a fort. Except it's an entire city and Kim Jong-un is the kid. Now, Samjion is decked out with shiny new apartment blocks and hotels, probably ready to host all the zero tourists who are lining up to see this paradise for people. It is a bit like Disneyland, if Disneyland were built by a regime that preferred theatricality to, well, actual amenities. And let's not forget, this is all happening while much of the country remains in desperate need of basic necessities. But priorities, right? Why feed your population when you can build a tourist trap instead? 
It's the North Korean way. If you can't impress them with your prosperity, dazzle them with your shiny, new and utterly fake facade. And with this we conclude this episode of Break the Fake. Stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.